Hey there. On today's episode, I will be taking a closer look at the fearsome leader of the Cabal, Red Skull, as well as the team tactic cards that will make this affiliation that much more dangerous. My name is Nate, and welcome to the Gamers Guild. Alright, so, as usual, I'm going to start with Red Skull's character card. Uh, it's usually the best place to start for a review. He has the Alter Ego of Johann Schmidt. He has 6 stamina on his healthy side, a movement speed of medium. He is a size 2 character with a threat value of 4. His physical defense is 4, but his energy and mystical defenses are both 3, which is still average. He has a strike, like many other characters do, that is range 2, strength 5, and has a power cost of 0. It also has the ability that after this attack is resolved, the character gains power equal to the damage dealt, and on a wild, it gains push. Before damage is dealt, this character may push the target character away short. Also, he has Cosmic Blast, which is an energy attack. It is range 4, strength 5, and has a power cost of 1. And on a wild, it gains sap power. Before damage is dealt, the target character loses 1 power for each wild in the attack, and this character gains that much power. Uh, and then his final attack is also a energy attack. It's called Unleash the Cube. It is range four as well, but strength seven and power cost of four. Uh, it always has the ability of if this attack deals damage after it is resolved, this character may throw the target character up to short. And then on a wild, it gains the ability Reality Warp. After this attack is resolved, the target character and characters within range one of the target character gain the stun special condition. This character is not affected by Reality Warp, uh, which is really good. Uh, being able to splash out some AoE uh, condition tokens and stuff seems like it's going to be very good in the long run. So, getting into his superpowers, the first one we have is Master of Evil, which is his uh, leadership affiliation ability for the Cabal. It reads, each time an allied character damages an enemy character with an attack, after the attack is resolved, the attacking character gains one power. And again, power economy is going to be fa huge in this game. Uh, his second ability is an active ability, and it's called Cosmic Cube. It does require an action to use this ability, but it has a power cost of zero. And what this one does is you get to gain three power onto Red Skull, then you roll five dice. For each failure result, Red Skull will suffer one damage. His next one is also an active ability. It's called Master of the Cube. This one costs three power, but reads, uh, choose this character or another allied character within range four of this character, and place it anywhere within range 2 of its current position. A character may be placed by this superpower only once per turn. Otherwise, some pretty broken things could probably start to happen. His final one is a reactive ability called Hail Hydra. has a power cost of 2 and is basically the opposite of Captain America's bodyguard. When this character is targeted by an attack, it may use this superpower. Choose another allied character within range 2 to become the new target of the attack, regardless of range or line of sight. There is one difference on his injured side, and that is that his Cosmic Cube ability will now also damage him if he rolls a blank in addition so to... So, in all, health. he has 12 stamina to work with, and some pretty defen decent defenses, which makes him a pretty beefy character, which he needs to be when you're the leader, and if he goes by the wayside, you're going to lose out on some synergies, and possibly even some team tactic cards that you brought to the table. His attacks are all really good as well. Uh, his strike is about the average strike. Cosmic Blast has some good range uh, and the chance at stealing some power in certain situations. And really, Unleash the Cube is just pretty good in general. Uh, more times than not, it's going to be dealing that damage, so you're going to get the throw in which for then additional damage as long as you can throw them into something. In Reality Warp, while stun is not necessarily the most debilitating uh, status condition that you can put out, being able to put multiple status counters out in a single attack action is going to be really good. His powers are all really good and very flavorful to Red Skull. Uh, from rewarding his allies for attacking with Master of Evil, throwing caution to the wind for the chance for more power with the cube, and to throwing a friend under the bus to make sure he's not taking too much damage with Hell Hydra, uh, they did a really good job designing his card. However, it can't all be good news. Red Skull is an action-hungry and power-hungry character, which, again, bonus points for flavor. Almost everything you want to do with Red Skull costs some power from teleporting himself and other allies to his ranged attacks. And the solution to his power problem costs an action, which means that he won't be too mobile and won't always be on the attack. Really, I think it just means that they balanced Red Skull really well, because he still will be able to do some really cool stuff, 
without taking over the game every single turn. So, because Red Skulls are sole leader for the Cabal, I want to take a quick look at the team tactic cards that are for the Cabal. Uh, the first one we have is a Dark Rain. It is for the Cabal and has the time frame of active. Any Cabal character may spend three power to play this card. You then choose an enemy character and all Cabal characters get to reroll any number of attack dice when t attacking the targeted character until the end of the round. So this card is basically model removal, especially since it'll be used in the later turns of the game where there's a little bit more stacked up power. Uh, the downside to this card is you need to be running a pretty high number of Cabal members to make it worthwhile. So if you were planning on high Cabal numbers to bring it, sure, go for it, it's going to be very worthwhile. But if you're only bringing 3 out of 5 characters or something like that, it may be not quite as worth it. The next card we have is Cosmic Invigoration. Again, it is for the Cabal affiliation and has the time frame of active. It says Red Skull may choose another ally within range 2 that has an activation token on it. Each of them may then spend 2 power to play this card. Remove the activation token and roll 3 dice. The targeted character suffers 1 damage for each hit, crit, and wild rolled. Uh, this card is insane. I think it's a must run if you're bringing the Cabal. Red Skull doesn't even have to target another Cabal member to use this, which means the possibilities are, well, not entirely limitless, really high. Uh, the best case is when we have Hulk getting a second activation, uh, which is downright insane. And the worst case is another model other than Red Skull gets to take another turn, which is still really good. Uh, I cannot see why this wouldn't be in every single Cabal list that ever gets run. Uh, the only downside here is you may stun or kill the model you want to have go for that second round, and they don't get power from any of the damage dealt. But as long as you play this card pretty smart, uh, don't use it on somebody that only has 3 health remaining, uh, this card's going to be a very dangerous weapon in the hand. So, as a whole, Red Skull and the Cabal seem to really know what they're about, attacking and mobility. It's really cool to see the contrast between Cap's defensive abilities along some of the Avengers' healing cards versus Red Skull's offensive abilities and the Cabal's aggressive tactic cards. Uh, something worth noting is Cosmic Invigoration does require the Cabal affiliation. I know I just talked about this a minute ago, but I feel like it needs reiterating because the card seems to focus on Red Skull, uh, and while Skull is still a character worth throwing into non-Cabal teams because he has some really strong abilities, you won't get to bring Cosmic Invigoration along with him, unlike Ultron's specific card or Ricochet Blast with Captain America and Iron Man. Uh, Red Skull will definitely be strong enough to start laying down some paint on his own, and with decent defenses to boot, it means he's not going to fall over to a, bree a stiff breeze. He's certainly an aggressive character, and the Cabal seem to match up with that idea really well, uh, between being able to teleport allies like Crossbones to get them into the action quicker, and rewarding aggression with Masters of Evil. I think the Cabal will be great at taking some of those extraction objectives and should be able to hammer enemies at long range that are on the secure objectives with uh, their longer attacks like Doc Ock, Ultron, and Red Skull himself. That's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button as always and consider subscribing. I've got plenty more planned for Marvel Crisis Protocol in the future, and if you want to get to know more about the game, consider taking a look at some of these other videos. Uh, as always guys, thanks for watching and keep on gaming!